So, dear and respected friends, welcome to our Swadhyay Sachakra dialogue. Uh, let me begin with the, the session with an invocation of the song. So, let me share the screen. so much for your kind attention. Uh, uh, I Randhir Kumar Gautam, on behalf of Swadhyay Sahchakra family, creative co-learning 
Biswanidham Center for Asian Blossoming, Puducherry and Chennai. I welcome you from the bottom of my, of my heart to the talk on the very topic, Chitranjan and the quest for freedom, creative traditionalism and cultural citizenship in educational features. Futures. It's a movement of extreme pleasure to welcome the guests who are virtually present here to attend this webinar. Honorable Dr. Marcus Bussi from University of Sunshine Coast, Australia. Moderator of today's session, Professor Anand Kumar Giri from Madras Institute of Development Studies and all the respected participant viewers and all my friends. Let me give a brief introduction to our honorable speaker. Marcus Vissi is a futurist and researcher with the arts research in the Creative Humanities Center, University of Sunshine Coast. He's interested in cultural processes that energize social transformation. He uses future thinking to challenge the dominant beliefs and assumptions uh, that contain human responses to rapid cultural, social, and technological change. Marcus has fascination with the poets of anticipation and its expression through heritage, myth, and literature, his workshops, research, and writing all focus on the quest for individual and collective empowerment and creative uh, and hopefully pathways to the future. Marcus has held fellowship at Nanyang Technical University, Singapore, and Tamkang University, Taiwan. He is currently discipline head of university and program leader in future studies at his university, USC. Let me also give a kind of brief introduction to our Swadhesha Chakra. Uh, Swadhesha Chakra, you know, uh, uh, nurtures uh, Chitranjan uh, Century Memorial Lectures. It is an initiative for of studying and learning uh, together self, culture, societies, and the world. Friends associated with these are eager to walk and mediate with new horizons of thinking and new movements of social and cultural change at work in our contemporary world. We are study seekers such as Sri Arvindo, Gandhi, Chitranjan Das, a creative soul, creative thinker from Orissa, and many others from around the world. We also present our own writing, reflects upon our creativity together. We also invite seekers from different fields of life to share with us their lives, vision, satna, and a struggle for creating a world of beauty, dignity, and dialogue. We meet every Sunday or sometimes on Wednesday. We are now nurturing this uh, talk, this creative talk in collaboration with Department of Humanities and Social Science of Rathas University and the Rage Global Foundation. It is an initiative of Viswanidhan Center for Asian Blossoming. Uh, Swadhyay Sahachakra uh, uh, Chitranjan uh, Century Memorial Lecture series. Uh, this is the third lecture of this year. Chitranjan Das, let me give a kind of brief in uh, biography called a sketch of Chitranjan Das. Chitranjan Das is a creative seeker and transformative thinker and activist in our times who has written and worked on many aspects of human lives, be it education, philosophy, literature, and integral human development and social transformation. Chitranjan Das was born on 3rd October, 1923 in Bagalpur in the undivided district of Katak in Odisha, India, and left his mortal body on January 16, 2011. 2011. 
Thus is known uh, to many of his friends, co-traveler and concerned publics at large in Orissa and uh, India as Chittabhai. Chittabhai was had uh, initiated many creative experiments. He founded uh, Jivana Vidyale School of Life at Chambapati in 1950. He was pioneer of integral education movement in Orisha and translated uh, major work of uh, philosopher Arvindu and the mother to Oriya. He nurtured both uh, Agragami. Uh, Nava Pallava, creative efforts in education and travel development in Orisha. He wrote and translated around uh, 250 books, a majority of them being in Odia and some of these in English. With this introduction, now I, I would like to invite Professor Anand Kumar Girishar to kindly moderate the session. Sir, over to you. Thank you. With my heart, dear Ranbi for holding our hands and helping us to enter this beautiful field of being with Marcus, my dear and our dear and respected friend and co-traveler, Marcus, Dr. Marcus Bussi. And Marcus is also a lifelong dedicated searcher, a traveler with creative education, creative thinking, and he himself has worked in many schools at the school level. And also what is so remarkable is that in his own life journey, he has the deep experience of being a classroom teacher in the school, but also in the university. And as Jitavai says, and as also as Gandhi says, that um, education is not bound into the four worlds or five worlds. And Marcus' engagement with the world also embodies that. Every moment becomes a moment of experience, uh, education, enlightenment. And Marcus also has been nurturing many creative efforts in alternative education. When I was very fortunate and blessed to meet him uh, in, uh, in his home space, so we visited three schools one uh, Montessori school and another government school and another school where Marcus is on the board. And I could feel the sense of nurturance he presents to uh, friends associated with alternative education movements. At the same time, Marcus also has been nurturing another very deep uh, alternative educational experiment called neo-humanism, which draws on the vision and the practice of Sri Sri Ananda Murthy. And there are many new humanist schools uh, in Australia, India, and around the world. So new humanism and alternative educational future is also another area of Marcus engagement as he also has been interested in future studies. But how do we think about the future? We must not forget that future was very dear to Chitabha. It was as dear as if he's holding future in his chest. And the way to do, to hold future on one's chest is to really have a layered understanding of the past and present. Therefore, in fact, I forgot to mention as any meeting begins in Australia and New Zealand and also in Canada, we begin by paying our uh, respect to the ancestral spirit of the land. And it is in that spirit that uh, we played this song about the Australian Aboriginals. You know? And in a way, the future is related to our journey with the Aboriginal. And in fact, the Aboriginal is a pejorative term. Chitabha is so uh, so careful, so meditative about language, we can think about the primal instead of the aboriginal. And one of the, uh, you know, unexpressed, unexpressed uh, interest of Chitabhai, which he was briefly speaking, towards the end of his life, he had an interest to write a book on Australian aborigines. Why? Because maybe he thought 
that the sources of civilization has some primal element. And, and uh, Marcus himself being born in Australia and deeply, deeply meditative about the violence that the recent settlement has done in Australia and in trying in his own way to undo that. In fact, creative traditionalism also involves that critical traditionalism, undoing the violence of the past, but at the same time building on the gems, the pearls of insights and wisdom that is there in history. Therefore, it is very rarely that we get a combination of history and future. That is Martha's journey. And in a way, that was also Chittabhai's journey. If you look at that Chittabhai's critique of society emerged out of deep historical meditations. You know, his work on Vimogoi, which was a field work and archival work, and Achyutananda and Panchasakha Dharma on medieval, uh, you know, the literature and society in medieval Odisha. Why? Because an alternative understanding of history prepares us for an alternative engagement with the present and future. Thus, I also wish to spend only a few minutes to share some thoughts about the topic and also some of the ideas of Chitabhai, as well also Paolo Fiore about education and cultural citizenship. I would just share the screen for a moment. I hope you can see the screen. Beginning with this thought of Chitabhai. Okay, I will come to the first one. For Chitabhai, teaching is a kind of kind of teaching, according to a Jain saying, education in the sense of a catalyzer, an awakener, an agent of creativity has been described as a subversive activity. And, and that subversive activity, as Marcus writes uh, in his uh, abstract, that subversive activity always brings us in confrontation with the bureaucratic apparatus of education. Mm -hmm. and, and, and therefore, what Marcus says is the tension between the poet and the manager. And, and in fact, uh, the, the vocation of a teacher is a struggle for freedom. As Krishna Kumar, another great uh, educationist of our time, that the condition of a teacher is a big dictator. Because in the classroom, he always you know, shows a lot of dictation to his helpless students. But in front of the educational apparatus, he is a meek person. So it is in that spirit that how do we really cultivate our pathways of freedom? But freedom not only to exist in the existing environment, but what Chitavai say is an experiment. In a dialogue with teachers and inhabitants of Oroville in 2009, which I have transcribed and it is part of the book, Adventure in Education, which I have edited. Chitabhai writes, this is the way we wanted the gathering to start the discussion. A teacher never believes in delivering lectures or listening to lectures. As a teacher very accurately said, education is an experiment. It was very significant that she said it. But she should also now say an experiment if it is really an experiment, has no end. Yeah. So therefore, as future also is an open future. An open future does not mean that we are helpless. We cultivate our future knowing that it is open. And therefore, also Chitavai brings the metaphor of laboratory. How the mother had said that the ashram is a laboratory, or of him is a laboratory. Similarly, education is a laboratory which works with tradition and that it becomes creative traditionalism as Marcus would put, and that creates possibilities of new visions of cultural citizenship. My humble submission is that the very idea of cultural citizenship involves a critique of culture as well, as well as a notion of citizenship. Because the notion of citizenship in the modern world, not only in the modern world, 
right from the Greek notion of citizenship, it is very much bound to the police, P-O-L-I-S. <laughs> and when police comes, can police, P-O-L-I-C, be far behind? Uh, yes. <laughs> you know, and therefore, so we do not want a reproduction of that police, police <laughs> citizenship, but citizenship is belonging to our soil. That is also a, a, a natural citizenship, you know. And now the notion of citizenship is moving in that direction, which also requires a reformulation of the notion of culture and tradition. A Chitavai would say that culture is a dance of inspiration in society and history, which struggles against the attempt to turn it into a property. And, and, and as Marcus works on heritage, and uh, you know, he would uh, also think that how there is a tendency to proprietize culture and heritage. At the same time, we struggle to keep it as an open space. And bringing uh, here Paulo Freire very quickly. And I remember one of the early statements of Chitabhai, I think it was in 1982 or 83, he had come back from a long train journey and I was there to receive him in his house. And uh, the book, Paulo Freire's you know, Pedagogy of the Oppress, you know, was there. And Chitavai commented, oh, Paulo Freire, by reading this book, has become immortal. So not only that, he had great love for Paulo Freire, conscientization. Now, since we are talking about cultural citizenship and freedom, now Freire has a book called Cultural Action for Freedom. And he writes, from a non-dualistic viewpoint, thought and language, constituting a whole, always refer to the reality of the thinking subject. Authentic thought language is generated in the dialectical relationship between the subject and his concrete historical and cultural reality. In the case of the alienated cultural processes characteristic of dependent object societies, thought language itself is alienated, whence the fact that the societies do not manifest an authentic thought of their own during the periods of most acute alienation. Reality as it is thought does not correspond to the reality being lived objectively, but rather to the reality in which alienated man imagines himself to be. Therefore, the centrality of imagination and in which Marcus is deeply interested, not only imagination, but intuition, anticipation, and also what is dream work. Because from the Australian Aborigines, we know the significance of dream. And I think alternative educational future also involves alternative dream work. This thought is not an effective instrument either in objective reality to which alienated man does not relate as thinking subject or in the imagined and longed for reality. Dissociated from the action implied by authentic thought, this mode of thought is lost in inactive false words. So therefore, where there is false words, even in the experience of the subject, the reality is that how do we transform that false word to living words? And both engagement with education, tradition, and future is a journey in that, that how do we really create new, emancipated, liberated, free life worlds, as well as living worlds. My final submission here is that this is all implicated in the kind of transition that we are today. Therefore, our challenge of future in both in education, freedom, and tradition is also confronted with a task of civilizational transition. Today, we are talking a lot about transition, you know, and that is very much in, um, in future discourse. And we are also talking about civilization, class of civilization, dialogue of civilization, uh, Professor Fred Dalmaya, who is also a Chitabhai like uh, figure and, and being whose birthday is coming on October 18th, is talking about dialogue among civilizations. In fact, future depends upon dialogues among traditions, cultures, and civilizations pointing to a civilizational transition. And what is that? According to Arturo Escobar, 
the main aspect of this transition is to move from a, a monologue, a one universe to a pluriverse. And that pluriversality, a world in which many worlds are possible. No wonder then, when the name of the journal of the universe, it's a very interesting center. In fact, Marcus in 2017, you presented a lecture online in the universe in Patak. And when the name of the journal was to come, and when Kitabai was asked, what is the name of the journal, he, left, he termed it as multiverse. So therefore, mm -hmm. the pluriversal is a challenge, as Escobar is saying, the notion of civilizational transition establishes a horizon for the creation of broad political visions beyond the imaginaries of development and progress and the universals of Western modernity, such as capitalism, science, and the individual. It does not call for a return to authentic traditions. It adumbrates pluralistic co existence of civilizational projects through inter-civilizational dialogue that encourages contributions from beyond the current Eurocentric world order. It envisions the reconstitution of global governance along plural civilizational foundations, not only to avoid their class, but to constructively foster the flourishing of the pluriverse. So with this submission, so it is a joy for me to invite uh, my dear friend and co-traveler, Marcus, to share us, to, to be with us, to, uh, to gift his thoughts and walking meditations on this theme. Uh, Marcus, please. Thank you. Namaskar. I, uh, in keeping with the beautiful introduction, would like to acknowledge the uh, traditional owners of the land where I am, the uh, Jinnabara people. And I know that we have um, Nadia, who's a friend and fellow traveler of mine, who's on, I think, Bachelor land. Uh, it's important to acknowledge the custodians of the land on which we meet and uh, to acknowledge the uh, past strivings there, Tapasha, in nurturing this world and this land, this beautiful place called Australia, as well as the, uh, their leaders today and leaders that are emerging. So it's wonderful to be with you and I very much appreciate being given the opportunity to um, share a little glimpse into my thinking about the wonderful work of Chitabai. And uh, particularly, you know, it's been a, an honor to be able to engage with his thinking uh, through the, these letters, which speak to me very directly, because as Ananta has pointed out, I've spent 20 years before coming to a university working with children of various ages uh, in, in many different sort of configurations, but definitely in forest school type conditions. Um, and it's uh, so when I read his letters, I, my heart warms and I, and I feel definite uh, a resonance with his journey, even though we were, uh, well, it was 1988, I started working in forest schools, you might say, I was teaching before that. But uh, from 1988 to 2003, I was working in a wide range of alternative schools, neo-humanist schools, um, as Anant pointed out, but also uh, a Montessori school, a democratic school, a secular democratic school, and so on. So that's a little bit of a background for me. And, you know, I'm going to actually uh, read elements of a paper that I've been writing uh, about uh, this re-encounter, I guess, with Chitta Ranjan Das, uh, because, of course, uh, I was lucky enough to work with, uh, with him earlier on the uh, book <clears throat> that uh, Ananta edited um, on um, early on mornings with Chitaran Jandas. But, you know, I'd like to start just with a quick image because I think images are very powerful. And uh, I'm gonna leave you to contemplate these images as I put them up. But for me, it's very easy to come up with simple answers. And I think simple answers um, tempt us to take the wrong road. And this image here I came across the other day and it made me think about the, the, the lonely journey, the journey on this side where people like uh, Das, like 
Tagore, like Aurobindo, Krishnamurti, Saka, um, just using people all from the Indian subcontinent have taken this journey, but also John Holt, Maria Montessori, and many others. The complex, which is the right direction to take, is a direction that we tend to shy away from because they demand so much from us. So uh, let me begin. Is it possible to escape the clutches of modernity? I'm sure Chitaran Jandas thought that, asked this question. I have friends who are suspicious of hope, of a misguided and toxic optimism. Yet for me, optimism is a central element in anticipatory imagination. It is this forward-looking imagination which we need to nurture and play with. To play, of course, implies a turning uh, to our playfulness as a species, homo ludens, and thus our need to invent, to test and trial, to fail, and perhaps also to succeed. Play is to learn in a holistic way through a range of experiences. Of course, such play can be based on zero-sum models where I win and you lose, but beyond that, it can involve collaboration and adventure and a dose of good fun. So when I think about our current predicament, I find myself hoping and looking into the resources we have available to us to engage with our age of strife, uncertainty and anxiety. Such resources include the imagination, anticipation, yearning, co-creativity, spirituality, tradition, and a myriad of examples from the past and the present of creative and strategic dissent. Wonderful. According to this quest, I look for examples in the past and the present who have gone before us, testing the limits of their world, challenging the expectations, the norms and practices that, so we're told, <laughs> will hold our world together. So I see in Chitranjan Das's attempt at a forest school such an adventure, inspired by Gandhi's concept of night to live or basic education. In 1954, Das started his forest school in Champitamanda in Odisha. And he recounts the experiences in a series of evocative letters, which I'm sure many of you will have read either in the original or in the English translation. For Das, an authentic India needed to reimagine the future, not as a version of the immediate colonial past, but as an expression of a deeper autochthonous past, which was fully uh, engaged with the global stage in reinventing the future. So I see in this work the powerful tension of a local practice in dialogue with a global force of modernity in this sense, it is to an indigenous modernity, perhaps, that does turns as he nurtures his educational vision. The forest school is an ashram of sorts, and thus an example of creative traditionalism in action. Thus himself, as you, many of you would know, was a product of Rabindranath Tagore's own creative traditionalist educational experiment in Shanti Nikita. He had also travelled and observed the world and was deeply interested and involved in the folk school movement of Denmark and Finland. In fact, one of his letters recounts episodes that illustrate the parallels he saw between his situation and the struggles of the 19th century Danish educator Christian Kold. The tension in Dusser's mind is between the innovator and the bureaucrat, who is like a prison guard, who was, to quote Dus, between, uh, sorry, has been bewildered by old habits and old subservience to such an extent that they had not realized the limitlessness of the sea. They had been confined to their usual limited periphery. That was letter 18. Dus's vision is of an educational freedom because life for him was the true curriculum and as such held infinite educational possibilities. So Dusser's creative traditionalism is therefore the source of his imaginative power. His enacting, it makes him a true cultural citizen, an organic intellectual, you could say, who finds strength in their culture, but is not, as Ananta pointed out earlier, constrained by the geo and socio sentiments that so often get associated with both culture and citizenship. Now, for him, tradition blindly accepted is a trap 
to be subverted. Yet tradition is also the source of rich alternatives and wisdom. It enables him to resist the colonial modernity imposed on the Indian psyche, you know, Ashish Nandi's intimate enemy, and explore other possible futures. As such, this is a mode of defensive modernity in which cultural citizenship mobilizes action that supports and nurtures healing from the wounds of colonialism. As I see it, creative traditionalism has inspired many defensive modernist strategies, and in Dusser's own case, no doubt, Tagore and Gandhi are key exemplars for him, whose own creative resistance to colonial modernity and their subversive engagements with tradition would have inspired Dusser's own. So, yeah, the future, of course, I think you would all realise this is heavily colonised. This was the case in Dusser's day and is in the case of our own. The decolonial movement is not simply a political movement, it's an existential quest for liberation, a spiritual exercise in the continued inner work of liberation. This activity is a form of sadhana and involves a struggle and as Ananta calls it, tapasya or strivings. It is, as Dasa's contemporary, Prabhat Ranjan Saka argued, an activity that must involve deep inner and outer work, liberation of self being linked to service to humanity. This work enables a cultural citizen like Dust to step into the future, or futures as I would prefer it, by way of an active working between pasts, plural, presents, plural, and futures. So this is an evolutionary work and is with us all, at all times, the handmaiden of alternatives. As Sir Hale and I truly would say, or puts it, the way out is not the imagined past, but a move to a spiral future, remembering history but creating alternative futures. What is needed is an evolutionary jump. I see Dusser's four years in this school as a tapasha, the work of liberation, the quest for freedom that stands in stark contrast to the heavily colonised commitment of Indian educational bureaucracy to the tenets of modernist industrial education. As he states in letter 18, this is him, in this forest school, we, the students and a few teachers, will get an opportunity to build our lives together with the assurance that we can do so far away from politics and envy. We are building our dwelling place here. We have faith in the assurance of freedom to walk our own way. Yet he smells a rat, I would say, as modernity has a compulsion to order and manage rather than create anything other than that which is in its own image. This is a familiar tale, of course. Freedom is not a given. It must be earned on a daily basis. It involves the ongoing work of spiritual critique that weaves a Foucauldian temperament with the logic of cosmic agency as actor in our own collective evolution. So this cosmos that we're in is a place of struggle precisely because freedom is the lure to it or a goad to consciousness. This work on consciousness is what Paulo Freire called conscientization. I was reading that paper today, and to the one you were citing earlier. So in Dasa's mind, India's casting off the British yoke was more illusory than real. The Indian bureaucracy, its conception of democracy and its own expression of political and cultural creativity were colonized and very much in need of renewal. The result, as Dasa observes, is for us to see behind the glass of freedom the old tyrannies, the old modernist colonial drive to call control and order and contain. As Dust notes, to quote, democracy has been adopted as the guiding principle of our policy and social life. But in several fields, the old colonized mindset continues to make us tyrannical. With the heightened propaganda for democracy, he goes on, our minds should grow more and more democratic, but we are growing autocratic instead. The purpose of such tyrannies is to control in a world of uncertainties. It is to manage and account for resources and ultimately to keep the old elites, can't forget that, in the comfort they are accustomed to. In addition, it also reflects the deep inferiority complex that colonised peoples feel in the face of colonising epistemologies. 
Thus, is very clear about this in his advocacy for the mother tongue women, for instance, and his and the imposition of English. So his heart calls him to resist, to argue for education which affirms the human spirit that is limitless like the sea. Here, he is again drawing on a synthesis of the deep spiritual traditions of Indian society with his indebtedness to the humanistic traditions of a progressive education. Now I'm gonna stop, step out of this and move to the next image. This image is, I, I love it because I'm a proud father. My own son drew this, Dante, who's an, an unto his met. Uh, Dante has spent all his life living with me, of course. I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, actually, but nonetheless, he produced this. Um, he's, he always had a struggle with school. He's 18, he's got four more weeks of school before he finishes his schooling life forever and, and then goes on to university. But, you know, he's been very disillusioned by school. He always found that school really got in the way of his learning, actually, and he learnt despite, you, um, I'd have to say. So here we have his, his uh, image of the false life. There is beautiful, playful things happening, and you go into the school, and suddenly on the right-hand side of the page, everything goes grey. Life becomes grey. It loses its colour, its wonder, its magic, its mystery, its spirit. Uh, I'm going to leave you to keep looking at that as I keep on working through my paper. But for me, you know, Dante caught something very special and it's inspired by an image which I'm going to share with you later on as well. So let me continue then. So, uh, Marco. Interestingly, the realization of human potential is what state bureaucracies often cite as their raison d'etre, as the future is open and educational sorry, and the educational landscape is dynamic and unpredictable. Yet their I'm methods I'm of educating not. remain deeply conservative despite the flourishing of a rich rhetoric of ex educational provision, such as found in the 2020 Indian government's 66 page statement on national education policy. I don't know if any of you have looked at it, but I have, because it's really interesting. I find these documents so revealing of the, I guess the yearning and the aspiration of people often in central spaces, for instance, policy makers, who are then trying to create an environment that might change the head space or the mindset, the worldviews of those who they charge with delivering education. So this is what they have to say. Now, Mark, one very good question. must evolve to make education Marcus. more experiential, holistic, integrated, inquiry-driven, discovery-oriented, learner-centered, discussion-based, flexible, and of course, enjoyable. Sound like anything you've ever experienced in, in schools? The curriculum must include basic arts, crafts, humanities, games, sports, fitness, languages, plural, literature, culture, and values, in addition to science and mathematics, to develop all aspects and capabilities of learners and make education more well-rounded, useful, and fulfilling to the learner. Education, finally, must build character, enable learners to be ethical, rational, compassionate and caring, while at the same time prepare them for gainful, fulfilling employment. It's an interesting twist at the end. So I always find such statements encouraging, even inspiring. But having taught for over 40, dec uh, 40 years now, um, I am aware that despite the visions of educational bureaucrats in central governments, that old patterns are bedrock deep in most classrooms and schools. To me, this fascinating policy struggle speaks to the tension between policy poets, who pen such enticing statements as the one cited above, and the policy managerialists, who, uh, with whom dust struggles way back in the 1950s, but with whom we still struggle today. And if you've read his letters, you'll, you'll have read the story where Kristen Cold uh, is up against an archbishop who sacks him because he's doing too well. <laughs> because, you know, the policy managerialists can't cope with exceptionalism. Everything has to be managed and contained within a specific parameter. So to continue. So Parker Palmer, that great Christian American educator, if you haven't heard of him or come across him, go looking for him, he's wonderful, describes the tension more prosaically as that between organisations and movements. I think this is really interesting. So Palmer says, organisations and movements both play creative roles, but to quite different ends. Organisations represent the principle of order and conservation. 
They are the vessel in which a society holds hard-won treasures from the past. Movements represent the principle of flux and change. They are the processes through which a society channels its energies for renewal and transformation. So Palmer is working here, hard here to be positive. And he had said so himself. And this response is framed with him questioning what he calls the pessim are pessimists are right. Are they right? So I think Palmer's solution is a pragmatic one, and it is certainly something that sustains me. For all too frequently, we can see the organization's triumph over the creative impulses of movements. Certainly, Dust was forced to bow out, as his translator Patanak has noted, under the pressure, he says, of bubbledom and red tapism. The tension between the managerialist state of uh, values of the state education and human goals of committed educators has a long history, of course. To see like a state, to use James Scott's provocative phrase, is to seek to mitigate risk, account effectively for monies invested, promote uniformity and consistency of delivery, and to manage the provision of services that deliver outcomes consistent with the demands of elite stakeholders. This managerialist approach works but comes at a cost in terms of human potential and well-being. As the American sociologist George Richards pointed out, the McDonaldization of society takes rational approaches and directs them to irrational ends. This is the madness of managerialism, and it sits at the heart of the managerialist state. Why? Well, because the purpose of the state is to manage complex relationships that exert, be, sorry, extend beyond the familial the intimate associations of pre-modern and pre-status conditions. As Yuval Harari has argued, it offers us an imagined order to counter the real disorder of complex associations. Yet the state is only one answer, but it was arrived at early and the model has stuck. So Harari's work captures the nature of that slippery space between what Elise Balding calls fact and imagination that space she describes where, to quote her, we begin to develop our own individual visions of what is possible for us and for humankind, where we all must do that co-creative work of community building. So this co-creative is, as is, is, is a work born from the struggles of Tapasha of many souls over generations. It is co-creative as each generation renews this Tapasha, struggle to find a way forward in a given context is defined by histories that are both local and global. So working a generation after dust, Bolding uh, identifies this as a, as a society building process. And she wrote, I write as a sociologist with deep convictions about the fact that every human being is called to participate in making society in a process of continuous creation. And she goes on, like Dewey, that's John Dewey, I ask, what kind of person is one to become? What sort of self is it in the making? What kind of world is making? And if we follow Dewey a bit further, we find him arguing that what can be calculated misses the incalculability of what those aspects of self-making that sit at the heart of life. To try to calculate such things as, state, as the state does is, as Dewey points out, to miss the point. It is precisely this position that's taken by Duss. We can feel his frustration with the calculability and his managerialist demands mirrored in his poetic vision of the freedom of a bird, a child finding themselves in the world. To quote Duss, the bureaucrats of the education department of the government were repeatedly issuing warnings when we were busy playing the role of a noble child in our extended family. We don't have the, uh, this file or that register We've not turned in uh, a certain report. Such accusations have become common. The old moribund Victorian bureaucrat's mind steeped in rules and regulations and files is sending its English reminders again and again, while we are absolutely innocent of all kinds of clerical sophistication. How can we meet this demand? They are trying to domesticate a wild bird that has set out to collect its food from this wide sky by putting a ring around it. Why don't they measure us by the depth of our feelings instead? Share our joys. Test us with after becoming amongst us and being one of us. 
Give up your old prejudices. Cultivate enough empathy to understand the wonders of a new beginning. Not a messenger of a court, but try to be a gardener of flower garden. I love these metaphors. It is, of course, amusing, I think, to imagine a bureaucrat's mind steeped in rules, assessing Dust's uh, uh, students on their way of life or the depth of their feeling. I think that's really quite, makes me smile just thinking about it. And I've been in that position, so I know where he's at. Yet this, of course, is what he's asking them to do. A chasm divides these two approaches. Yet we too face the chasm today as we seek to educate for futures both uncertain and complex. The world making of 1954 India and the world making of 2021 planet Earth have much in common. Huge potential, much hope and fear, uncertainty, insecurity, and of course, much to gain. Indeed, there is a lot at stake here. If Das were alive today, I am sure he would see a direct line between his bureaucrats and Modi's India. Just as Dewey in the US or Bowling, if they were alive today, would see the same line between the managerial estate and Trump's paradoxical contempt and simultaneous elevation of it. Yet the chasm is also an invitation. I guess you knew I was going to say that, right? Yeah. So in my world of work at university, Delivering quality learning to non-urban, regional students requires a dance between the demands of the system and a sense that there is something else involved in the learning process that educators pay lip service to, yet which is missed in the demand of the system to demonstrate its effectiveness. Thus, his reflection on his forest school are not too far from the meetings of many educators today. In fact, John Dewey, back in 1922, one year before uh, Das was born, offered this analysis. The poignancy of situations that evoke reflection lies in the fact that we really do not know the meaning of the tendencies that are pressing for action. We have to search to experiment. Deliberation is a work of discovery. Conflict is acute. One impulse carries us one way, into one situation and another impulse takes us another way to a radically different objective result. Deliberation is not an attempt to do away with this opposition of quality by reducing it to one of an amount. It is the attempt to uncover the conflict in its full scope and bearing. So Dust embodies this kind of exploration by establishing post-basic education school in rural Odisha. Yet the forest school, though short-lived, speaks to the human uni. For thus, life in its fullness is the true teacher, to quote him from letter seven. One who has set out to educate his body, mind and heart with lessons from daily living will not be confined within any limits. His aspiration for knowledge will be as vast as life, his teacher. His empathies will also be boundless. One infinite quest will draw the narrowness of our complacent minds. Our limitless empathy will dissolve the demands of our petty egos and self-centeredness. What a beautiful vision. So such experiments have occurred across the 20th century. We find them in Tagore and Aurobindo and Gandhi, Krishnamurti, Sai Baba, Prabhu Sarkar in India, all engaging with education. And beyond them, Steiner, Montessori, she spent 10 years in India. A.S. Neil, John Holt, as um, an auntie pointed to him, Parker Palmer, Paolo Freire, and many more, all working in the struggle to liberate the human mind and body from the conditions of managerialist education, all speaking to that keen human need to dissent. So this need is as strong as our need to conform, though. We have to acknowledge this. Again, that dance that um, Dewey was talking about, these are not oppositional, though, but complementary aspects of consciousness. We need order. We reject it. So this tension, you could say, is captured in the analogue of the bazaar, which is offered by Deepesh Chakravorty, a place both dirty and subversive. It is the place, this is quoting Chakravorty now, it is the space that produces both malevolence and exchange between communities and hence needs to be tamed through the continual and contextual deployment of a certain dichotomy between the inside and the outside. This need to be tamed is what makes the outside exciting, albeit in unpredictable and dangerous ways. 
So the bazaar is a cultural site of what Foucault called dangerous coagulations. It is a place where the past, the present, and the future collide in rich and unpredictable ways. For this reason, Ilko Runia argues that human beings leap into the future. Such leap enables the coalescence of alternatives based on the two previously suppressed pasts, inherent in the context. As Ethan Kleinberg, a wonderful historian, argues, in the, in the haunting of the present by these unruly pasts, plural, and when what lies latent, he says, appears, returns, history is haunted. And we are confronted with the possibility that our understanding of the past is polyseismic and contradictory. It is not what we tell it to be. So, stop and take a breath now and step back for a moment. How are we doing, Anata? All okay? And uh, yes, as you are taking a breath... <laughs> had to turn the sound off. And uh, yes, as you are taking a breath, we can breathe in with a bit of translation uh, with your generosity. And yep. uh, we have uh, many friends uh, here who would uh, be enriched with a little bit of translation of your deep thoughts into Odia. So I also request the generosity of all participants that I'll take uh, five minutes or so in presenting Marcus' thoughts into Odia for some friends, and oh. then we'll listen to you, please. Amara bhai bauni mane, amara bandhu Marcus, se bhari gavira katha mana amuku kahi chanti, se visheshkari chitta bhaiinkara jo jungle or chitti translation letters to a forest school the boy site is a echo atma jatra karichan kai ki marcus madhya pray kodiye barsha vidyalaya manantare padhai chan ebong sathe se kahuchan ki je vidyalaya re jo prakara bandhana sabu rahichi bishesh kari amalatantra jo bandhana seta ute shikshak ute chhatra bitare जो शिक्षा करी बारा एवं मुक्तिर प्रयास ताकि बांधी को एवं से चितवाई करो कथा नहीं कि कहूँ चंकी जो चितवाई मध्य जैसे बोले क्रिश्चियन कॉल ये हाँ जहाँ को परे चितवाई बहुत ही लक्ष्य चंकी शिक्षा और कांति करे क्रिश्चियन कॉल से भी मध्य तंको समय रे तंको विश्व तंको स्कूल रूप बाहर कर देती तो ये ट ये आम भी तो रे जो मुक्ति एवं सुजना सुलाता रो जो एक धारा ये तो कुछ ऐसी बांधी दिया जाए उसे अमलातंत्र भी तो रे आउ ये भी तो रे आउ उसे कथा की हो ची या मैं गणतंत्र रो कथा को उसी की तो भाई तंकर जंगल चित्र रे कही चुन कि तो गणतंत्र रो सब हवा सब थे आमरो मनोता गणतंत्र धारा रे बही जाई पारुने मनो आमरो गणतंत्र को पारुने आमे सही अमला तंत्र सही एक एक चत्र बादो टिरानिकल सिस्टम से निजों को एवं अन्यों को आमे जाहिर करुँचो आउ यहाँ सही तो आउ चित्त आमरो बंधु मार्कस अनेक गवीरो सांप्रतिको एवं चिंतनाएँ कमान को कथा सुबु कही चंती तादित्रे पाकर पार्कर पाल्मर आह अमेरिका के जाने सिखाया भी इसे कहूँ चंती जैसे सिखाया क्षेत्र रे संगठन और ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एवं मूवमेंट उटे जागृतो गतिशीलता इटा सबू बड़े उटे टेंशन स्थित रे था एवं संगठन मानो उटे सुजनों से लो आत्मा को समाने चापी दिया ताबितरे आमे जो ए जो मैनेजरियल जो अमला तंत्र से पक्की उटे सुजनों से लो पागला नहीं है, इटा उटे पागला नहीं हो चुके उटे अंधो पागला, उटे क्षमता रा जो अंधो पागला नहीं, तादित्र आमे समझते मरी मरी जाऊँ चुके, हरारी इस्राएल रजने चिंता भी से अनेक बता ले, कुछ अंति तंकु अनेक लोगों को लुच अंति, से भी कहूँ अंति, जब आमे उटे ऑर्डर को इमेजिन नारी से फैक्ट एवं इमेजिनेशन कथा कहूँ चंती यह सही तो से कहूँ चंती जो आमे समस्त के मिति संग है कि इतने नुतनों समाज सुस्ती करी पड़ी पार इतने को क्रिएटिव वर्क 
ଗୋଟେ ସମୁଦାୟ ସର୍ଜନା ଗୋଟେ ସମାଜ ସର୍ଜନା ଆଉ ତା ସହିତ ମାର୍କସ ଦେ ଗୋଟେ ଭାରି ବହୁତ ଗଭୀର କଥା ଟିକେ କହୁଛନ୍ତି ଯେ ଉଣେଇଶହ ଚଉବନ ମସିହାରେ ଯେତେବେଳେ ଚିତ ଭାଇ ଜଙ୍ଗଲ ବିଦ୍ୟାଳୟ ଆରମ୍ଭ କଲେ ସେଟା ଗୋଟେ ସୋସାଇଟି ଯେଉଁ ମାନେ ତିଆରି କରିବାର କଥାଟି ଥିଲା ବର୍ତ୍ତମାନ ସେଇ ଯେଉଁ କଥାଟିକୁ ଆମ ସମୟରେ ଆମ ଜେନେରେସନରେ ଆମେ ତାକୁ କେମିତି ନୂଆ କରି ଉଭୟ ବିଦ୍ୟାଳୟ ସ୍ଥାପନ କରିବା ବ୍ୟକ୍ତି ସ୍ଥାପନ କରିବା ଏବଂ ସମାଜ ସ୍ଥାପନ କରିବା ଏବଂ ଏଇ କ୍ଷେତ୍ରରେ ସେ ଜନ୍ ଡୁଇ ଆଉ ଚିତ ଭାଇ ମଧ୍ୟ ଜନ୍ ଡୁଇଙ୍କ ଚିନ୍ତା ସହିତ ଅନେକ ସଂଳାପ କରିଛନ୍ତି ତାଙ୍କର ଯେଉଁ ପ୍ରବନ୍ଧ ଏଜୁକେସନ ଆଣ୍ଡ ସୋସାଇଟି ସେଇଟା ଜନ୍ ଡୁଇଙ୍କ ଚିନ୍ତା ସହିତ ଅନେକ ସଂଳାପ ସେ କହୁଛନ୍ତି ଡେଲିଭରେସନ ଗୋଟେ ଆଲୋଚନା ସେ ଆଲୋଚନା ମାଧ୍ୟମରେ ହିଁ ଆମ ଭିତରେ ନିଶ୍ଚୟ ଆମେ ରାଜି ହବା ନାହିଁ ମାନି ନବା ନାହିଁ କିନ୍ତୁ ଆମକୁ ଗୋଟେ ସମାଜରେ ରହିବାକୁ ହେଲେ ଆମକୁ ସ୍ୱତଃସ୍ଫୂର୍ତ ଭାବରେ ଅନେକ ଜିନିଷ ସହମତ ହବାକୁ ପଡ଼ିବ ସେଇ ସହମତି କେବଳ ଉପରୁ ଲଦି ଯାଇଥିବା ସହମତି ନୁହେଁ ସେଇଟା ଗୋଟେ ପାରସ୍ପରିକ ସହମତି ଆଉ ସଭା ଶେଷରେ ସେ ଆମର ଦୀପେଶ ଚକ୍ରବର୍ତ୍ତୀ ଆମର ଜଣେ ଐତିହାସ ଚିନ୍ତାବିତ ଆଉ ଉପସ୍ଥିତ ମାର୍କସ ଏବଂ ଆମ ଗଣରେ ଅଛନ୍ତି ଡକ୍ଟର ପାୟଲ ଚଟ୍ଟୋପାଧ୍ୟାୟ ମୁଖାର୍ଜୀ ସେ ମଧ୍ୟ ଦୀପେଶ ଚକ୍ରବର୍ତ୍ତୀଙ୍କ କାର୍ଯ୍ୟକୁ ଜାଣିଛନ୍ତି ସେ ବଜାର କଥା କହୁଛନ୍ତି ବଜାର ଭିତରେ ଅନେକ ଜିନିଷ ହେଉଛି କିନ୍ତୁ ଗୋଟେ ଏକ୍ସଚେଞ୍ଜ ହେଉଛି ବଜାର ସମ୍ପର୍କରେ ଆଉ କ୍ଲିଫର୍ଡ ଗିୟର୍ଜ ବୋଲି ଗୋଟେ ଜଣେ ଅନେକ ଗଭୀର ଆନ୍ଥ୍ରୋପୋଲୋଜିଷ୍ଟ ସେ ବି କହୁଛନ୍ତି ବଜାର କ'ଣ ବଜାରରେ କେବଳ ଇଟ୍ ଇଜ୍ ନଟ୍ ଏ ପ୍ଲେସ୍ ଅଫ୍ ଏକ୍ସଚେଞ୍ଜ ଅଫ୍ କମୋଡିଟି ବଟ୍ ଅଲସୋ ଏକ୍ସଚେଞ୍ଜ ଅଫ୍ ସେଲ୍ଫ ଆଉ ତେଣୁ ଏଣ୍ଡ ଦିସ୍ ଇଜ୍ ଅଲସୋ ଭିୟୁ ଅଫ୍ ଜେ ପି ଏସ୍ ଉବରୟ ଏଣ୍ଡ ସେ ଉବରୟ ମଧ୍ୟ ମେଲେନାସିଆର ଯେଉଁ ମାନେ ଏକ୍ସଚେଞ୍ଜ ଉପରେ ହି ହାଜ ରିଟିନ୍ ଏ ବୁକ୍ ଏଣ୍ଡ ଫର ଉବରୟ ହୁ ଇଜ୍ ମାଇ ଟିଚର ହୁ ଅଲସୋ ବିଲ୍ଡସ ଅନ୍ ବୋଥ ଗ୍ୱେଟେ ଏଣ୍ଡ ଗାନ୍ଧୀ ଗୋଟେ ବଜାରରେ ଯେଉଁ ଏକ୍ସଚେଞ୍ଜ ହେଉଛି ଦିସ୍ ଏକ୍ସଚେଞ୍ଜ ଇଜ୍ ନଟ୍ ଓନଲି ଏକ୍ସଚେଞ୍ଜ ଅଫ୍ କମୋଡିଟିଜ୍ ବଟ୍ ଅଲସୋ ଏକ୍ସଚେଞ୍ଜ ଅଫ୍ ସେଲ୍ଫ ଏଣ୍ଡ ଦାଟ୍ ବ୍ରିଙ୍ଗସ ଆସ ଟୁ ଚିତ ଭାଇ ଅଲସୋ ହେଜ ଏନ୍ ଏସ୍ ଏ କଲ୍ଡ କବୀର ଖାଡ଼ା ବଜାର ମେ ଏଣ୍ଡ ହି ଡ୍ରଜ ଅନ୍ କବୀର ଏଣ୍ଡ ଦିସ୍ ଆଇଡିଆ ଦାଟ୍ ହୁଏର ଇଜ୍ କବୀର ଷ୍ଟାଣ୍ଡିଂ ହି ଇଜ୍ ନଟ୍ ଇନ୍ ଦି ଟେମ୍ପଲ ହି ଇଜ୍ ନଟ୍ ଇନ୍ ବନାରସ ହିନ୍ଦୁ ୟୁନିଭର୍ସିଟି ହି ଇଜ୍ ଇନ୍ ଦି ବଜାର କବୀର ଖାଡ଼ା ବଜାର ମେ so it is in that midst of anything so now dear marcus please continue <laughs> thank you wonderful wonder wonder i like it um so yeah this this image here i i use uh, regularly with with students and friends to illustrate the folded nature of the past the present and the futures and i'm trying to capture that in this sense that when uh, when we assert cultural citizenship we we are not in any way essentializing either culture or citizenship but seeing them both as dynamic processes of becoming and of owning that which is at the root of the identity of a locale of a location a place but linking that because i i see ourselves as both citizens of the local but also citizens of the cosmos linking that across time and space in in a in a truly um creative way so let me return then to uh to my thoughts here and um i will stop more regularly and until so you can actually do that translating um so okay so back to it i'm interested in dynamism and hope i have no doubt that dust is attempting to leap into the future in the way that um the bazaar would hold for us education is not what we are told it should be his is a quest for freedom of the bazaar as a creative traditionalist and a cultural citizen he mobilizes a range of deep truths or narratives drawn from both the indian and the global quest for authentic human expression and pedagogy his remembering of alternatives is put to the test in this process his students discover their own unique voices not as a hyper individualist but as co-creative actors in a scheme or weaving of meaning so one boy said the following which i am quoting from letter number 3 it is beautiful and it picks up on something that anantha said in the introduction 
The thread of my dreams is getting lengthened after being united with the threads of these hearts. I feel like carrying a garland studded with pearls. It's hard to imagine, I think, of a regular student in a regular school seeing their world like that, that their dreams are being connected to uh, the threads of the hearts of their fellow students, fellow travellers, and of course, the teachers with them. So all true educators are involved in such dream gifting. This makes them cultural citizens of the first order as their citizenship is premised on their access to what Ananta has called roots and roots of their own cultural praxis. Cultural citizenship is dynamic, creative, and very much at home in the bazaar. This is the learning site par excellence. Of, uh, it's a space not bounded by the dominant definitions of order or compromise or power. This is, of course, also the source of the anxiety or terror faced by the bureaucrat who cannot manage such a space. The bazaar is noisy and coarse. It's filled with voices and memories and suppressed or disowned practices and futures. Such a space is the site of a robust pedagogy of life. It is a pedagogy open to, in fact, premised on what I've called robust ignorance. The kind of ignorance that invites creative improvisation and evokes mystery. Such ignorance is vital and liberating. It frees us from the desperate need to control and make space, or make space, should I say, for creative expressions of self and other, as in the garland or the thread of dreams proposed by Das's student. As the wonderful Canadian educator Jeffrey, uh, David Jeffrey Smith uh, argues, to quote, instead of a pedagogy oriented towards mastery, closure, totalism or towards nihilism, it will be oriented towards remembrance and the activation of voices rendered silent by contemporary narratives. It will know the fundamental ambiguity of all narrative, all story, an ambiguity which will be understood not as a pathology, but rather as essential to the very survival of speaking, thinking and acting. Thus is exploring in this way, boundaries in his own quest for freedom. His is a revolution against the colonizer's mindset, achieved via an assertion of cultural citizenship. He grounds this exploration in the intimate connections of his school to place. He theorizes too, as an organic intellectual, his sense-making as narrative in style. And yet he is fulfilling his and our need to understand and describe and also evaluate the ex educational experiment he's set up. His premise is that, to quote him, revolutions begin in the human mind. We are not ashamed to declare that we are not acknowledged the contemporary culture and social systems as legitimate. That's from letter 12. In letter 10, he says, no, we must be true to our soil, to the people of the land, its culture. And in this process, we shall make our own lives more meaningful. We shall not be scared of the vastness of the suffering of this land. We shall not closet ourselves in Katak because there are tigers in Koraput. The floods and the droughts of this year do not belong to any particular place. They are a part of our corporate fate. I love that idea. Someday we have to banish these misfortunes from our minds, from our midst. But acquiring the skills of honest living. We must help our society in becoming more honest. The educated ones must strive for personal salvation, but we shall shun such selfish ambitions. We shall be as dynamic as a drop of water on the leaf of the lotus. I love that. that for us, therefore, such dynamism was essential to the learning process. He was keenly aware of the passivity with which, you know, had been instilled by the British colonialism. Today, we see a similar passivity in the face of a wide range of threats. What we have is jealous nation states sowing fear and confusion, powerful elites enjoying wealth beyond the common imagination, and a planet in dire need of love, care, and justice for both the human and the more than human. To be dynamic is to be hopeful, hopeful that a better world is possible. Such hope begins when our lives are made meaningful through action in and for the world. 
Das, like all visionaries, draws upon a deep tradition of pedagogy that is inherent to his culture. He is a cultural citizen working for open futures. In doing this, he, to quote, recreates, reinvents and reconstructs foundational givens of mainstream interpretations of past and history. That's from Ivana Milojevic. This is the work of creative traditionalist. His aim, as Ivana Milojevic states, of such workers is to uncover and operationalize the hidden stories suppressed by hegemonic narratives. In other words, to push back the epistemicides, the epistemicides uh, that we are facing. So Ananta, if you want to leap in, I'm going to just give this other image, this metaphor here, because I want to turn my attention to metaphors. Should I keep going uh, or should I uh, take a breath I... again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let us take breaths together. <laughs> so, yes, I'm a Bible. I'm a Mubabuchi Apumane, Bujipar Marcus Concoutanti. See a Bazar Kotako is the Coutanti. See a Bazar on a Cola Holoroy. A bureaucrat man account away. See a Bazar cook empty sober control curriculum. Can to Bazar Vitrejo some Havana Roichi. आउ पिता भाई तंकरो जो साधना रे तंकरो शिक्षा करो जो यात्रा रे तंकरो जो आउ यही तंकु बाजार को था कोई बात जाई से कनाडा रे जो ने शिक्षा दी डाविड जेफरीस मिथ तंकरो को था से कोचन दी तो यही जो नाम गुड़ा को अपनो देखी बे आउ से कोचन दी जे शिक्षा तक ये बड़ा नियंत्रण पाएंगे बड़ा बड़ा प्रयोग रही थी आम भीतर है जहाँ से भी संभावना रही थी आम जहाँ से भी संभावना में और काम कर तक समय मने पके है बा आह ये सब भीतर है चित्तभाइन करो जो उनका था थी ये तंकरो छात्रों जोने छात्रों टे लेकिन ची प्रकृति रे इस विद्यालय रे रोहिला परे मुझे कुछ ही मरो सपनों मानो तार जो सुता आह संगो है कि सपनों मानन करो जो देना लगे ही संगो है कि जो उड़ी बारो एवं संगो है कि सपनों माने मिसी उटे सपनों रा हारो उटे साधना रा हारो जो तैयारी कर चुके आह चित्र भाई कुछ नहीं विप्लव बटा कौन थी आरंभ हुए विप्लव बटा प्रकृति मनुष्य मनोरे आरंभ हुए एवं सही थी नहीं आम को सबूत प्रकारों तमिश्रा स मार्को सही कथा को गुरुत्व जो चुनती, जैसे बोला ये ब्रिटिश कॉलोनियलिज्म आसीला, आमो भीतरे जहाँ सब वो गतिशीलों का थीला, आमो रखे थे इंडस्ट्रीज थीला, हॉस्पिटल पो, पत्रों समस्या रे, सेपर दिन तभी भारत और पृथ्वी रो उठे वन ऑफ दी सब उठारो उत्पादन आसीला देशपतीय थीला, आमो रो गतिश हम गतिशीलता है, हम को हम को स्वाधीनता एवं मुक्ति का सहित हम को आशा बनी करा, जब पर जनता में सोई रही थी बात, जब पर जनता हमें निराशा रह बुरी रही थी बात। So now dear Marcus, please. Thank you. Okay, so I want to look at metaphors. So this is the metaphor of the factory that inspired Dante's wonderful drawing that I shared with you earlier. So. Ivana was talking about, or Ivana Milovic, she's a friend of mine, was talking about hidden stories. So let's pursue them. Such hidden stories carry with them deep, mythic, metaphoric potential. Thus certainly deploys a wide range of these metaphors in his letters. There we find birds flying free, the limitless ocean, the drop of water on the lotus leaf, and so on. Such metaphors are rooted in his own cultural world and as such are poetic, evocative, as in images from folk songs, folklore, and the natural world. I'm familiar with some Bengali folk songs, you know, Tom Pakabane, Motura Shwapane, you know, this idea of the dream, the Shwapane, that is captured in the in a, in a phrase like that is, is to me just transports me somewhere. And he's drawing on that. So these metaphors contrast with the technical and the mechanical metaphors of modernity, like the factory here on in the image that I'm sharing with you. Images such as the cage for the bird, the jail, the adding machine, the whip in the machines, all taken from uh, Das's own letters, 
What needs to be understood though, is that each metaphor operationalizes a future's imaginary. Each carries a, a anticipatory potential. So the, the future is in a sense built from images that we've internalized. That's what I'm trying to say. Yet, though the metaphor is rooted in the past, it carries us forward into a wide range of alternative futures. And alternative futures fall into families or types. You know, we've got humanist futures, utilitarian futures, like the neoliberal ones, romantic and critical and democratic, green, spiritual. All of these uh, families are ways of understanding the classroom, social process itself, my life, our lives, the planet, and so on. Each one is a lens. So some lead us to utopias, while others to dystopias, and others, as Milojevic argues, lead us to utopias, eutopia, and meaning a good place. Of course, one person's good is another's evil. So we, might, we need to turn to values that measure the potential impact of one future over another. We need to consider how agency is understood as a verb in each type. Thus is looking for futures that are inclusive, culturally appropriate, spiritual, just, creative, value, uh, valuing human dignity as intrinsic to the subject, anti-colonial, of course, and free. He understands, as does his younger contemporary, Vinay Lal, the knowledge, the, sorry, that knowledge is not a passive commodity, but rather um, a world builder that maintains power relationships and manipulates identity. Therefore, we find in his letters a rejection of the dominant assumptions of British hegemonic knowledge making. We need to work for alternative educational futures as enablers of a world that is life affirming and alert to the workings of power in shaping future aspirations. So as Lull notes, no future can be promising unless it entails a thoroughgoing critique and dismantling of modern knowledge systems that have given us the interpretive devices with which we have sought to make sense of our lives and the world around us. For much too long, the spokespersons of the world have not merely pretended they have the solutions to the world's problem, but they have been allowed to exercise a monopoly over what kinds of questions are asked and the manner in which they are to be asked. So metaphors seed worlds, epistemologies sustain them. Action is understood according to both and each holds core values. Such orientations are not mutually exclusive and can be seen to work with or challenge one another at different times in different contexts according to the ghost, you could say, of any period. So I suggest in table one, which I hope so I'm going to put, oops, here we go, there's table one. I suggest in table one a snapshot that speaks to those moving aspects via the form we attribute to it. It's operating metaphor, the verb that roughly equates to the epistemic orientation and finally to the core value. All are imminent, of course, to our human setting, yet not all are equally visible or viable at any one time. There is usually a, a hege hegemon, okay, some uh, one of these that monopolizes the space and somehow delegitimizes the others. That's particularly true for the utilitarian, which is obviously the uh, modality favoured by uh, the nation state, the colonial mind, uh, the bureaucrat in general. So it is clear that dust was moving freely, though, in my mind, across and through and around much of those metaphorical trains. At different times, we can see dust you know, operating within a humanist paradigm. The utilitarianism in Dust is actually grounded in um, the amount of service work that he and his students did during the time in the school. They were out helping during floods and 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 famines and so on. They they were doing a lot of service work, actual physical hard fit work. Okay, there's a romanticism in Dust that is captured by the um, the beauty of his metaphors. There's a critical mind. There's this critique going on that he's very much aware of the relationships of power and knowledge and language, particularly the you know, the dominance of English, for instance. 
um, in his day. He's also a, a Democrat, but he's he's suspicious of democracy because he can see how it's being undermined by a, a narrow, shallow, uh, superficial democracy. You know, he, he doesn't give very clear indications of his greenness, but certainly uh, it's there because he romanticizes the environment in which he's at. He talks particularly, he writes about the tiger and, and the footprints outside the, the, the school buildings and so on. So it's very much, he's very much attuned to that. And of course, the forest acts as uh, a safety place for him. So the green is there. And of course, the, the spiritual is very much there. He's very much attuned to, this, to the spirit of place and to his own spiritual traditions. Then we can look at the metaphors and the myths and the core values. When we understand that futures thinking and, uh, and dreaming and acting and building futures for education is based on a sense of how do we handle this collection of possibilities. So I'll leave you to contemplate that. Um, I, I will be sharing the, the, this paper with Ananta afterwards and Ananta, you can pass it on. I will take a breath there and then I'll just conclusion. Okay, Ananta? Uh, Marcus, now, yeah. Amaro, I'll just translate for a few minutes. Amaro Bhai Boni Mane, A for Jare, Marcus Punascha, Amiko Gaviro, Kotamanamoku, Kohuchanti, the Kohuchanti, the Procutere, the Amaro Jonesabu, Amabitre Jonesabu, Okua Kahani Manor, Sikata Procutere, Okua Kahani Manor, Sanskriti Vitre, Okua Kahani Manor, Sikaku Kentiame, Suniba. Our eight hectare, the Kosiame Titrakal Pobe Barco, the children to Poki, Bajon Prakaro, Metaphor use for two. Seta Amoro, Otito Kamuku Jukakare, Tasset Amuku Bobisha Tara to Naja. Say Bobisha Tara to Kubala Naja, which is Bobisha Takabora, whatever Tara Bobisha Tama, Onek Bobisha. Say Onek Bobisha Tare, the Mopai Kunta for Law, Bong Aponuka Pai Kunta for Law. I am a Mulio Hodo Abbasato. Who empty would have published the town TV? Empty Musamastanko for a Shidaiki Mutter Raja Hepi. Then a Babisota Mopai with a kitchen summer pine would take Mate would take his summer pine would take Tatkaliko and under the book. Into one Namateko, more projaiki, Mopakajan Tititway, Tanko Bodhi Lexanti, they would have joined Raja Tile, the dancer was your pine taco dance, get some baby, Tim Tanjo and Lukotak put the person down to me. So empty am a Babisota town chicken. Our Ekatrabe, no futures hobo. The future stuff of Kutrek, Mukti of future. Amorabandu Marcos, Yamo Samara Aujona, it has a bit of Kintabi, Tankanam Binoy Lal, the Gandhi Cooperate, Matil Lekitanti, Mutanku Janichi, our Binoy Lankoro, the Tanko Chintono Queti, for Stapana Kursinti. Secondanti is a Kutare, Konosi Babishato, our Bisheskari Mukti Pradanakari, Babishato, some Baban way. The present Adunico Gianoku, I may summit Moko Papa. Adunico Giano, I make a summit canopy. I can Adunico Giano Vitore, a test of Bondona Rodici, Setipeco Summitia Abon, our Sujama Sula Tabon, Uttorona Abosseco. Setipe Nuanua Sapto, Nuanua Titropalpo, Jemiti Amesabu Suta, Amesabu Haro, Ameco Poki, Amecabolo. Kongsai Horror of Param, he subdued a kit of white and cross jungle six paper park. I'm a copper car of Param, a pocky. So, Ajo Citrocal Pomana set a good and Nuton of Yano Adapuneta. Marcus Parik of Hiro Abre Fosun, the metaphors are on both way. Taprejo Yano Protataku epistemology quasi, say epistemology taku, Dharano Kori. I'm a Kali. Chitrakalpa gura dey dala hapani. Ame kongsai gharoro parano. Ame mukta akasura pakhi. Kali eti ki kar dala hapani. Setsay gude jano jo sadana lekhiba, padhiba, aur chintona koriba. Yota chitwaai tankaro sadana re kori chanti. Se epistemology mana taku dharana kori. Ebang taas hoyta motyo action karma. 
ଆସୁଥିଲେ ଏଇ ଯେଉଁ ତିନୋଟି ଏକ ସୃଜନଶୀଳତାର ତ୍ରିକୋଣ ମୁଖୀ ତାପରେ ଏଇ ଯେଉଁ ଗଭୀର ବିଶ୍ଳେଷଣଟି ମାର୍କସ କରିଛନ୍ତି ଯେଉଁ କଥାଟି ଦେଖେଇଲେ ଆଉ ଚିତ ଭାଇଙ୍କୁ ବୁଝିବା ପାଇଁ ହ୍ୟୁମାନିଷ୍ଟ ୟୁଟିଲିଟେରିଆନ ରୋମାଣ୍ଟିକ କ୍ରିଟିକାଲ ଡେମୋକ୍ରାଟିକ ଗ୍ରୀନ ସ୍ପିରିଚୁଆଲ ଆଉ ଏଇ ଜଙ୍ଗଲ ଚିଠି ବହି ପଢ଼ି ସେ ଗୋଟେ ଭାରି ସୁନ୍ଦର ଏକ ମାନେ ଆଲୋଚନାର ଏବଂ ଅନୁଭବର ପଥଟି ଆମକୁ ଦେଉଛନ୍ତି ଯେ ଆମେ କେମିତି କେବଳ ଚିତ ଭାଇଙ୍କର ସାଧନା ନୁହେଁ ଆମ ନିଜ ନିଜର ସାଧନା ଏବଂ ଆମ ଶିକ୍ଷା କ୍ଷେତ୍ରରେ ଯେଉଁ ସବୁ ପ୍ରୟୋଗ ହେଉଛି ଆମେ ତାକୁ ବୁଝିପାରିବା Thank you. I'll, I'll go back to sharing that screen just so that people can see that, but I'm going to conclude now. So um, fortunately, we do not need to settle on any one of those singular alternatives, of course. This is not the point. The point is to keep this conversation going, to maintain the critique that Lal is advocating for as an unending work of consciousness, or as Friero would say, conscientization. Das himself is sanguine. He observes in 1965, perhaps the debate about the comparative efficiency of various systems of education shall continue as long as mankind is alive. I think he's right. Yet his effort has provided one of those rare touchstones in the history of educational experimentation where fearlessness and trust in the learning potential of each human being, when given the environment, is realized helping his students become a little freer, a little close to the soul of learning. For me, much of this charm comes from Dus's own creative traditionalist approach. He was as much an adventure, sorry, his was as much an adventure in culture reclamation, the post-colonial urge, as it was in testing the limits of both bureaucratic tolerance and the pedagogical imagination. His sheer enthusiasm in this work is truly humbling. Even now, I can feel his joy overcoming the frustrations he no doubt felt along the way. As he states in letter 21, the forest has provided us the space to feel the essence of the mantras of fearlessness charted in the Vedas. The earth and the sky, the night and the day do not fear each other. Then why should not I be fearless? This inspiration fills us with joy and strength. Thank you very much. Now my reflections on this uh, wonderful human being, and I hand it back to you, dear Ananta. Happy to answer questions if you have them. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you stopped sharing. Good. Thank you. I was about to do that. Thanks, Grandi. Thank and and very quickly, I'll also translate these lines. Hamara bhai bani mane tankara sesa bakya manukho. ଭାରି ଗଭୀର ଆଉ ମନ୍ତ୍ରଯୁକ୍ତ ଆତ୍ମଯୁକ୍ତ ସେ କହୁଛନ୍ତି ଯେ ଶିକ୍ଷା କ୍ଷେତ୍ରରେ କେତେ ସବୁ ପଥ ରହିଛି ତାଙ୍କ ଭିତରେ ତୁଳନା ଅବଶ୍ୟ ରହିବ ଶୀତ ଭାଇ କହୁଛନ୍ତି ଯେପର୍ଯ୍ୟନ୍ତ ମଣିଷ ସମାଜ ଥିବ ଶିକ୍ଷାର ବହୁବିଧ ପଥ ରହିଛି ଏବଂ ତା ଭିତରେ ତୁଳନା ରହିବ ଆମେ ଅନେକ ଶିକ୍ଷା ପଥ କଥା ଭାବିବା କିନ୍ତୁ ମାର୍କସଙ୍କ ବିଚାରରେ ଚିତ ଭାଇଙ୍କର ଯେଉଁ ଶିକ୍ଷା ପଥ ସହିତ ଯେଉଁ ସାଧନା ସେଇଟା ଏକ ମହତ୍ୱପୂର୍ଣ୍ଣ ପ୍ରୟୋଗ ଶିକ୍ଷା କ୍ଷେତ୍ରରେ ଶିକ୍ଷାର ଇତିହାସରେ ଏବଂ ତାର ଦୁଇଟି କଥାଟି ହେଉଛି ଫିୟରଲେସ୍ ନିର୍ଭୟ ଏବଂ ବିଶ୍ୱାସ ଶ୍ରଦ୍ଧା ବିଶ୍ୱାସ ଏବଂ ଅଭୟ ଆପଣ ମାନେ ମନେ ଥିବ ଚିତ ଭାଇଙ୍କର ଗୋଟେ ବହି ଅଛି ତାର ନାମ ହେଉଛି ଅଭୟଂ ଅମିତ୍ରା ଅର୍ଥାତ named uh, marcus is fearlessness from even non friends because it is very yeah. easy to be fearless from friends but yeah. the name of the book is <laughs> avayang amitra and amitra is very interesting it is non friend is not enemy non friend amitra is not satru yeah no mitra is friend amitra is the opposite yes i understand not not totally but it is not enemy but amitra amitra has the potential to become a friend and so therefore uh, marcus kar chintare e jo bhaya mukti nirbhaya ebong biswas ebong shraddha ebong chita bhai tankara jo jangal bhitre jo vidyalaya jangal ta prakrutare aranya ba bana eta hoche nirbhayata ro ek 
अरण्य हूँ निर्भयतार एक जननी एवं से गोटे भारी गभर कथा कहीं बर्तमान सभ्यता संपर्क भी जहाँ सब आलोचना हो the all the discussions about city for example city of course gives us freedom freedom from the difficulty of the forest into all the city based civilizations they have tried to chain humanity into fear yep. and now with climate crisis bartaman amar jo jalvayu parivartan se se unde forest ko jo recover forest is a place of dreaming and as a place of trust our uh, theta be the civilizational transitions so with this now let us be with marcus and uh, we apologize our heart is with you marcus <laughs> now though there is no tension between night and day but slowly night is marching with intimacy to you we'll, so it is now our dear friends let us join marcus in conversations and uh, those of you who would like to ask please do mention it in the chat box but to initiate the conversation and i request friends to take 2 to 3 minutes and after that uh, i will listen to marcus reflection on it to initiate the conversation let me invite professor dhaneshwar sahu प्रोफेसर साहू इज टेकिंग समाइम देन सुश्री अपा प्लीज ओके सुश्री अपा i cannot see the participants on the list and then uh, okay then uh, yeah, yeah. susriya pa saji is there saji how are you okay. maybe saji isn't there let's have a uh, hello sir hello sir <laughs> very nice very happy to hear and see you in fact i joined a bit late uh, yeah. at least the 95 to 98 percent of uh, what you spoke i missed and there is also connectivity issues here so i'm not able to make myself visible to you not able to switch on the camera okay okay now um, about this chitta bhai chitranjan das about whom you are speaking this is the second lecture uh, followed by our friend professor klama who spoke yeah. on the theme the other day that was the first lecture that i heard on professor chitranjan das i am yet to know much about this great revolutionary the social transformer of orissa but the in the form of a follower we have our great friend professor ananda ji whom we have been following in true spirit at least to me and i also tries to imbibe much of the things that he also tries to pass on to us i'm professor marcus having said that i am not very sure how do you place chitta bhai do you place him as an indian philosopher a neo vedantian what school does he ascribe to or is he oh, simply simply someone who spoke on environmental issues as social transformer what kind of a theory was he proposing this is my humble enquiry because i do not know the theme on which you spoke i am very sorry so yeah. because i missed that so this is one thing that was there in my mind 
I mean, okay. if you could to me, uh, Chitaranjan is a polymath. He, uh, you know, if if you get the book that Ananta edited back in 2012 or whatever it was, there are, I mean, the, the number of essays there that demonstrate, you know, his linguistic, his literature, his uh, his sociological thinking, his philosophical thinking, and so on. Um, it, it's his his intelligence was vast, uh, but it wasn't just his intelligence. I think that, I mean there are lots of smart people on the planet, people who can speak many languages, but it, it was his, the, his linking of his thinking to social action and and deep engagement with the culture and the issues of his world through practice. So for me, then, if you say, well, what kind of person, what orientation would he have? For me, uh, and you, you've been working with uh, dear Ananta uh, on this for some time, I would say that, you know, he's a spiritual pragmatist. He's involved in the pragmatics uh, of a deep spiritual engagement with consciousness and with Therefore, with the evolution, not just of, you know, a better India or a better Orissa, uh, but with a better humanity and beyond even, you know, a, you know, he's, it's a contribution to that uh, beautiful scope of consciousness that to where whichever spiritual traditions we inhabit, uh, I think we all feel that emotional response and connection to. So that's my response to you, Sajid. Thank you, Marcus. Now, Thank you. I now invite, uh, in our midst, we have uh, Binapa, Simati Binapani Nayak, please. Those friends who like to speak in Odia, you can speak and I'll translate it, please. Mm -hmm. Binapa? Okay, we have our friend Chakri who is a very uh, deep seeker of new knowledge. So Chakri, please. Okay. Bharat Bhai, please. Bharat Bhai, you can unmute and speak. Bharat Bhai. Okay. Ananta, maybe you, we can just sing an Aryan folk song like yeah. we used to do. We'll be we're around the campfire. You know, it's it's ten past eleven here. My brain is starting to get very tired. Maybe yeah. we just sing something beautiful. Sure. So now we can uh, request Prabhatiyapa. Prabhatiyapa. Okay, Sandhya Appa. Hello, Sandhya Appa. Hello. Okay, so let us sing a song. <laughs> and uh, okay, uh, Susri Appa. Hello, Susri Appa. Susri Appa. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? Uh... I have been Good evening to yes. all and uh, you know thank you so much thanks to Dr. Marcus for very en enriching and insightful uh, but I, I don't know why I'm unable to switch on the video and even the mic was also not getting unmuted. I'm sorry first time when you called Anantabai I could not unmute. I don't really have a question after such a very uh, uh, mesmerizing to say the least uh, presentation by Dr. Marcus. Mm, um, so uh, and especially we don't want to because looking at the time at his, uh, you know, at the part of the world that he is presenting from. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, whatever you direct. 
ନାଇଁ ନାଇଁ ସମସ୍ତେ ମିଶିକି ତାହେଲେ ଗାଇବା ତାପରେ ମେବି ୱି କ୍ୟାନ୍ ଦେନ୍ ଗୋ ଫର ଅ ପୋଏମ ହଁ ଗାନ୍ତୁ ଗୋଟେ କିଛି ଅଛି ହଉ ଆପଣ ଏଇଟା ଜାଣିଛନ୍ତି ନା ଏ ମନ ସିନା ଓକେ ଏ ଜଏନ ମି ए मन लेट एवरीबॉडी आई थिंक शुड बी ऑल अग्रीड आपण आपण ही जॉइन करंतु आमे दुई जण गाइबा समस्त ले इट वुड क्रिएट अ लॉट ऑफ काकोफनी ओके ए मन सिना मन सिना चतुर धामुरति हे मूढ मति ए मन सिना देखिले पाइबो सुख ओ मन सीना so markus this is a poem from achyutananda and pitabha used to love it it mm-hmm. means o oh mana o oh mind you are chaturdha murati like we say vishnu has four head you know four hands so you are the chaturdha murati so this is very briefly and now uh, susriyapa before you read the poem we have bharat bhai i had invited he wants to speak bharat bhai please अपन अनम्यूट करके कहंती डक्सिले हां भारत बाय नो आई एम नॉट एबल टू अनम्यूट हां मु सुनि पा छी भाई अपन ऑलरेडी अनम्यूटेड अछंती अपन कहंतु प्लीज हमें सुनि पा छी रियली हां नो एक्चुअली आई एम रियली ग्रेटफुल टू डॉक्टर मार्कस बिकॉज़ I mean, I, I love Chitta Bhai very much, and I love those who discuss about him. And because education is not my field, I can only have uh, touch the uh, sort of uh, uh, borders. <clears throat> But it was really great. And um, I don't know what I'll, uh, I would like to speak because uh, I was uh, <clears throat> sort of totally engrossed. and i'm trying to um, figure out what he is telling uh, speaking anyway it's a great thing that um, people around the world have joined this and um, this anant bhai has organized this um, dialogue uh, for chitta bhai in honor of chitta bhai remembering chitta bhai so it's a great thing i am feeling very happy but because education is absolutely not my field i am i am a manager of an organization of a steel industry and um, uh, I, d- i do not have much depth i have read the book of uh, forest um, uh, letters uh, letters from forest um, school and then uh, i was just thinking but it is so sad that uh, the dream of um, chitta bhai did not fructify and it got uh, nipped at the bud it was very sad and we also had observed a, uh, an event here on the birthday of jivan vidyalay and uh, many uh, educationists spoke on that day and anyway uh, only i can say my gratitude to uh, dr Mar- marcus Mar- that's all uh, i would like to speak thank, thank you, you so much thank you bharat bhai and now uh, susri appa please Yes, I can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I'm unable to switch on the video, but I would uh, uh, read out a poem. Uh, uh, you know, I selected this poem to read, uh, being uh, inspired by this. Uh, you know, by our discussion today uh, on Chitta Bhai and especially Dr. uh marcus uh, statement on the uh you know the tension between the poetic side and the managerial side mm. and i'm sure that every poet every poet undergoes <laughs> that and uh, everyone has experienced everyone uh, sees that in other poets as well so this poem is basically uh, 
uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, a dedication to the inner journey of uh, we all poets. Uh, the title of the poem is The Last Climb. Here goes. The surface is uneven and sooty. The surface is uneven and sooty on which are lying a muddle of assorted leaves, some enticing flowers and few entwined stems of thorny realities. The surface is uneven and sooty on which are lying a fiddle of muddle of assorted leaves, few enticing flowers and few entwined stems of thorny realities. In front of me is a wall. In front of me is a wall, prominent and bright. The walkway looks difficult and muddy. The walkway looks difficult and muddy, but familiar to me. I have recognized. Many times I have walked steady into this celebrated wall of existence. Many times I have walked steady into this celebrated wall of existence. Many times I have rebelled and dashed against it. Every time it has received, nourished, and sent me back to the same circle where destiny moves on its predefined orbit. Many times I have walked steady into this celebrated wall of existence, and many times I have rebelled and dashed against it. Every time it has received, nourished, and sent me back to the same circle where the destiny moves on its predefined orbit. This time yeah. I see at a distance. This time I see at a distance a few steps. Heji and Melo and smiling at me. I have chosen to climb. This time I see at a distance a few steps, Heji and Melo and smiling at me. I have chosen to climb. Where they take me is not known. I may reach yet another nothingness or I may find home. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Beautiful. And uh, very quickly, uh, dear Marker. So let us uh, also listen to Ranveer uh, Minatiapa. Uh, Ranveer, please. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, it was really, very really amazing talk. And uh, I can see the beauty of. Uh, Chitranjan Bhai's Prakshalozi, uh, I would say, and uh, I can relate with uh, his source of inspiration of doing that experiment, that is Ravindranath Tagore. You know, we have critique of modern education system, and limitation of modern education system is that uh, that is uh, transformative, but not emancipatory. So in, in, in that sense, I can see the kind of education that uh, Chitranjan Bhai uh, tried to build is education and according to his uh, conception that I can draw with your insights that education is an exercise of model building, a, a, a construction of ideal type a development, a kind of development of social skills or political rights. Because uh, what we can see, the kind of education that uh, social reformer, but, you know, they, they develop, uh, somehow, you know, we can see a kind of, uh, the, that has a limitation that, uh, uh, did not go into the ground. So in, in, in that sense, his uh, uh, contribution is, is remarkable in the sense that uh, somebody asked, you know, what kind of edu uh, philosophical school you want to put. Mm. But he's, 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 uh, he is not uh, having just expert knowledge, but his knowledge is activist also you know, praxis also. Yeah. So in that spirit, we can, uh, you know, envision his idea. Thank you so much. Thank you, Randeep. And now, uh, Minati Appa and then uh, Basu Bhai, please. Hello, am I audible? 
गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन थैंक यू अनंत भाई एंड प्रोफेसर मार्कस बुसी फॉर दैट सच ए डीप एंड इन फाइटफुल प्रेजेंटेशन आई थरोली एंजॉयड एंड वॉज आई मीन लाइक डाइव इन टू टाइप टू द थिंग्स so i don't know i had little bit of doubt small doubts can i ask now with the time is there i don't know <laughs> yes, <that. please. laughs> so, see how we go yeah no just uh, for anant bhai it is a small doubt when you are talking about the australian aboriginals i mean primary primal elements you are talking about is it um, through learning through the experiment and experience or something else that one question and what are the differences between the pluriverse and multiverse <laughs> so so uh, for i mean professor marcus busi i just wanted to know in this current scenario of education system how can we practice the limitless empathy to bring the education to all in the real meaning the education to all so that is that is one one query and i want to tell little bit about freedom i mean we all know that freedom from and freedom to are two different things like you know freedom from is implies yeah. like um, privation uh, deprivation like hunger poverty and lack of shelter so freedom to is the individual's rights to i mean uh, free to do something so yeah. these two things how we can uh, fit into the chitta wise philosophy so this is this is my i mean humble inquiry and anant bhai if time permits i would also like to read one poem the same line with uh, susri oppa if time permits thank you <laughs> okay uh, thank you minati oppa and uh, very quickly uh, marcus we have our friend basu bhai aparajita da yeah. basu bhai please Basubai, okay. So Basubai is taking some time. So Marcus, uh, maybe you would like to share your thought about Minotti's question. Sure. Um. Uh, just oh. one minute. Basubai has come. <laughs> yep. So Basubai. Uh. समस्त को नमस्कार मार्क सुगुवी अंत भाई हेलो अंत भाई हाँ सुना जाऊँ ची प्लीज मु दिन तीन टक कथा खाली कहिया कुछ आऊँ ची जेटक अपनो इंग्रजी दे तंग कहिये दे बे शियो ये सेठी अमें तंग को भी मु आगरू तंग को भेटी ची बोली वर मने हो ची जहाँ बैंगलोर रे आउ जेहतु जोने से क्या बड़ा बने जोने शिक्षक हिसाब से कम कर संभव हम जेत जंगल चिठी पूरा आलोचना आमर अनुभूति जहाँ केत स्टूडे जो मैंने बहुत बयस्क बयस सहित मिसिकी जहाँ मुझे जानी अनेक थर भेटिक स्कूल इनपायर्ड होते कौ प्रकार इनपायर्ड होते किमी जन शिक्षक हिसाब से चित्त भाई स्पर्श कर स्थायी भाव भर से कथा रही जीवन में क्षेत्र में गोटे सोशल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन, एजुकेशन सब विचार रही दृष्टि गोटे क्रियाशील जीवन रही सर्वोपरी गोटे उत्साह रही बयस मैं अशी वर्ष बयस शशी भाई आम देखु शांति भाई से उत्साह रही अनेक आशा रही से कथा मुवल गोटे कथ कह गोटे कथा कहते जन शिक्षक से स्वभावत तो शिक्षक ही नी से कथा कर सामाजिक कर्तव्य हिसाब से शिक्षा को लेकिन केवल गोटे इंटेलेक्चुअल एप्रोच नहीं कि देखिए गोटे सोशियाल 
मान गोटे सामाजिक आंदोलन से गला राजनीति करा बेस स्पृहणीय क्षेत्र क्षेत्र आंकर बंधु मान भी मेन्टन मान भी चाहूले से फेरी आस राजनीति करक से हो पारे बोली यथा टाक सी निजे बुझी थे तेनाली स्वभाव को निजर गोटे सेल्फ सहित सामना है गोटे निज सहित गोटे निज को सी जानी सी कौन करे क्रिस्टन कल क्षेत्र जड़े से इनपायर्ड ना जेकोसी क्षेत्र में सी जब स्वभाव तो सही कथा कि प्रेरित बोली जो नजाणे सी एम कम भी करें जो गोटे स्थायी मूल्यता रही गोटे स्पर्श से करे अनुमान क्षेत्र में मुखश्री को मार्कस देखिपरबल गोटे मिनिट रिंधिक मार्कस वु लव टू सी यू इफ पसिबल सो तापर आम बासु भाई कौन जे आवर बासु भाई सेंग दैट व्हाट हैज हैपन इज दैट दी पर्सन स्टडीड विथ चित भाई सम ऑफ देम आर स्टिल विथ आस वन शांति भाई शशि भाई एंड दे आर एटी इयर्स एंड दे कैरी that sense of presence and the sense of living presence yeah. and this one he wanted to say the second thought is that the idea of cultural citizenship and a teacher as a cultural citizen for example mm. now this also invites us to think about that while citizenship might be a little bit more social but a teacher the inspiration comes from the swabhava the soul yeah. and and he yeah. just bringing that dimension just yeah. bringing it maybe for reflection and he is saying that with chitavai what happened was that he chose to be a teacher though he had lot of opportunities to be a political worker yeah. or one yeah. thing or yeah. other so he just wanted to bring this <laughs> beautiful beautiful so now we are slowly in the moment of uh, you know embracing each other and meeting again but we are going to be helped by minati <laughs> who is going to offer a little vote of thanks and minati while offering your vote of thanks you can conclude also with your poem I do not be very formal like uh, <laughs> I don't know like turn down who are is there. It is it is normally Professor uh, Devendra Tiwari who is to do that. So <laughs> you are so okay. So first I apologize everyone if I leave uh, somebody or don't take somebody's name like that. So because I'm not used to do this, just because Anantha Bai is requesting, so I'm doing. So it may not be. It may be very informal also. So so we'd like to thank. professor marcus busi for his um, beautiful presentation and enlightening us for uh, to this session and all the dignitaries professors the students participants who are present here so i thank everyone and uh, i don't know i could have learned something from professor devendra but i am not always listening to him only so i thank professor anant giri also for uh, conducting such uh, beautiful seminars and uh, webinars for us to learn and dive into the knowledge of ocean i mean the ocean of knowledge and i thank professor randir gautam also for uh, being the convener of uh, all these webinars and all professor saji susriyapa sandhyapa basu bhai and uh, please excuse me if i leaving someone and thank you all and now your poem please 
Yeah, the poem title is Expectations. The same line as Sushriyopa says, no? many times we fail to, I mean, deliver, not to deliver, we just uh, juggle between the duties and uh, that to fulfill everybody's expectation. So it is from my book, A New Dawn, and I, the title of the poem is Expectations. So it goes like this. I am heavy with the burden of expectations. I am heavy with the burden of expectations, the expectations of being perfect under the preachy loads. I am cocooned in the fear of not to breathe easy. I am cocooned in the fear of not to breathe easy, not able to laugh the way I want. The top is lonely. Even though the truth is known, desire to reach there makes us forget the irony. The top is lonely, even though the truth is known, desire to reach there makes us forget the irony. A life different from usual, where every move is measured. Every sound that comes out matters, even, try, even trial to accommodate everyone's comfort. Turning the impossible into I am possible. Turning the impossible into I am possible. Draining the sweat and blood for being remarkable in the crowd. Diminishing the chance of just being a human being. Diminishing the chance of just being a human being of being human. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank much. you all. Thank you, Minati. It also, I think, vibrates with the spirit of Marcus. And just one line, I we also want to thank you for the questions you have raised. When, for example, Aboriginal and the primal, I think the word Aboriginal is something which is not too respectful. And, uh, and that is part of the challenge that we would have to transform, whether it is tribe or the primitive or the Aboriginal. The primal in the sense of primary. And we have begun our life. And in fact, the kind of time that we have now, this is 2021. But why it is... Uh, 2021, you know, if we add the Australian primal time, we think 62,000, you know, <laughs> isn't it? You know? <laughs> so it is that journey with time and Marcos also is part of a network called Big History and, you know, and about multiverse and pluriverse, that the world multi, yes, multi is more than one, one, two, three, multiple. But that multiple sometimes is the multiple of the one that we know. And, and though multiverse is more than one, but multiverse also has a pluriversal. But the pluriverse is really plural. And that many worlds that we live, it is in that spirit. Pluriverse is a rainbow of the worlds that we live and we met. So with this, we again you know, thank em you thank embrace you so each other and yes uh, and uh, i have one prayers to sing <laughs> shall i please <laughs> let me share the screen with this prayer thank you so much for your kind attention and with this spirit okay. we can say Aray, we thought you are going to sing. <laughs> Next time. Thank you oh. so much. Thank, Thank you. you.